My name is Jehoshaphat, and this is the account of my journey. After Solomon's death, the kingdom split into two. Ten tribes formed Israel, and two tribes created Judah. Following in my father's footsteps, I ascended the throne of Judah at the age of 35. As the ruler of a smaller nation, I faced critical decisions. Despite the opportunity to align with Israel, which was under the influence of Queen Jezebel, a worshipper of Baal, I chose to follow the ways of my ancestor David. I commenced my reign on a strong spiritual foundation, seeking guidance from the Lord God rather than embracing the practices of Israel. The Lord established my kingdom and bestowed upon me great wealth and honor. I remained devoted to the Lord and eradicated the high places and Asherah poles from Judah. I appointed officials and priests to teach the law of the Lord throughout the land. My love for the Lord God brought the fear of the Lord upon the neighboring kingdoms, preventing them from waging war against me. Even the Philistines presented me with gifts and silver as tribute, while the Arabs brought me abundant flocks. I grew in power, constructing forts and store cities in Judah and ensuring ample provisions for the towns. In Jerusalem, I maintained a formidable army of 1,161,000 experienced soldiers. These loyal men served alongside those stationed in the fortified cities throughout Judah. Furthermore, I appointed Levite priests and leaders of Israelite families to administer the law of the Lord and settle disputes in Jerusalem. They resided there, providing guidance to the people. However, troubles arose when the Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Munites joined forces to wage war against me. The Moabites inhabited the highlands east of the Dead Sea and had a history of rebellion, opposing both King Saul and David. Now, they stood against me. Concerned about the approaching vast army from Edom on the other side of the Dead Sea, I sought divine guidance. I proclaimed a fast for all of Judah, acknowledging that relying solely on my own strength would be futile. I gathered the people together to seek help from the Lord. Standing before the assembly at the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, I humbled myself and addressed the Almighty. Lord, God of our ancestors, are you the ruler of all kingdoms? Power and might are in your hands, and none can withstand you. You granted this land to Abraham's descendants, and we have built a sanctuary for your name. Now, we face an invasion from those whom you spared in the past. We are powerless against this vast army, but our eyes are on you. Recognizing God's sovereignty over all nations and recalling his promise to deliver his people, I pleaded for his judgment upon our enemies. I referred to King Solomon's prayer from the temple dedication, where he acknowledged that the Lord would fight battles on behalf of his people. I posed the same question to the Lord, affirming my trust in his power and seeking his intervention. In response, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, a Levite and descendant of Asaph. He delivered a prophetic message to the assembly, proclaiming, Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. The battle is not yours but God's. Position yourselves, stand firm, and witness the deliverance the Lord will bring. Receiving this divine assurance, I and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell to the ground in worship. Then, the Levites from the Kohathites and Korahites rose and praised the Lord with a loud voice. Early the next morning, we set out for the desert of Tico, marching alongside my valiant warriors. Our ultimate victory depended on our unwavering faith. After consulting with the people, I appointed men to sing and praise the Lord for his splendor and holiness as we led the army forward. Our anthem echoed, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. As we advanced, the Lord set ambushes against the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who sought to invade Judah. The enemy forces turned against each other, resulting in their own destruction. When the men of Judah reached the vantage point overlooking the desert, they witnessed a scene of lifeless bodies strewn across the ground. None had escaped the hand of the Lord. We gathered the spoils of war, discovering an abundance of valuable equipment, clothing, and treasures. The plunder was so vast that it took us three days to collect it all. On the fourth day, we assembled in the Valley of Baraka to give praise and thanks to the Lord. The people of Judah and Jerusalem returned to the city with joy, for the Lord had granted us a great victory over our enemies. As we entered Jerusalem, we proceeded to the Temple of the Lord with harps, lyres, and trumpets. The surrounding kingdoms heard of the Lord's intervention and the defeat of our adversaries, causing fear to grip their hearts. Peace reigned over my kingdom, as the Lord God had granted me rest on every side. 
The story of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, serves as a testament to the power of faith and trust in the Lord. Though faced with overwhelming odds and a formidable enemy, he humbled himself before God, sought his guidance, and acknowledged that the battle belonged to the Lord. In response, the Lord fought on behalf of his people, bringing about a miraculous victory and securing peace for the land. Jehoshaphat's reign continued with a dedication to the ways of the Lord. He remained devoted to upholding the law and ensuring justice in Judah. The people of his kingdom lived in prosperity, and Jehoshaphat's name was remembered with honor throughout the generations. This account stands as a reminder that when we place our trust in the Lord, seek his guidance, and worship him with faith, he is faithful to fight our battles and bring about deliverance. The story of Jehoshaphat encourages us to keep our eyes fixed on the Lord, for he is the source of strength and victory in every circumstance.